So the river in Kalispell is in play, provider of all, right? That was, that was, that was our transportation, would feed us. So we, our, our ceded territories go all the way into Montana, Ronan up in there, Camas Prairie. So it was upper, middle, and lower. So this was the lower Pondere. Middle were kind of the lake habitaters, and then above that was the uppers. Once the dam went in, what was it, 52, uh, you started to see this more reservoir style, warmer water, uh, the banks are horrible, right? I mean, you can't, there was, there was that disconnect from the tribal community. We, I mean, we still have elders who won't go down to the river because they're scared of PCBs and all the pollution. Um, the difference is like getting down, just getting down to the river. I mean, look at this. And then you look over on this side, um, there's a lot of sloughs. So we, that's a lot of our fishing area now. Whereas it used to be bull trout. West Slope Cutthroat, cold, fast moving, um, and now this is this is what we're left with. So, Northern Pike have been present in the watershed for about the last 40 or 50 years. They were illegally introduced into the Clark Fork Flathead River systems in Montana um, back through the 60s and 70s. They were firmly established within the Clark Fork River, Knoxon Reservoir, and Cabinet Gorge Reservoirs. Um, prior to the mid-1980s. And there were some angler reports in Pondere River downstream of Lake Pondere dating back to, you know, the late 80s or so. But in a couple um, surveys that were completed in the late 80s, early 90s, several hundred thousand fish were sampled and no northern pike were caught. Um, there's also been, you know, 10 or 15 years worth of habitat um, monitoring work in sloughs in the reservoir and no, no northern pike were ever encountered in those. We first detected them in 2004 in a reservoir-wide warm water fish survey. That's a joint effort between the tribe and Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, Eastern Washington University. And we caught, um, that first year, 2004, we caught 27 pike in our gill net sets in a sample of about 25,000 fish total. Um, so that's, that's when we really started thinking that we ought to know a little bit about northern pike and um, started looking into, into the population that following year. And, and you, you literally could see that when we started, because it was like, okay, we've seen a few in Ashton Filter Bay up by Newport. Okay, now they're kind of Red Norse, Davis Creek area up here, uh, the other side of the bridge. And then pretty soon, oh, there's, we're catching pike and Pow Wow Slough, man. They're coming, they're here. So you could just follow. And that's predominantly where the scientific community was at. It's like, well, they get here, they start here, they're gonna move down. If they're in a riverine system, they're gonna, they do the same thing everywhere, right? They get big, then they stunt, then, there's, then they overpopulate. So I am the vice chair of the tribe that just started my 10th year, my fourth term. Um, but previous to council life, I was a uh, fisheries technician for the Natural Resource Department. Uh, me and the biologists were the main guys out here, netting, uh, hook line sample, electro fishing. Um, we were the, the Pike Project pretty much. And just seeing the numbers and seeing the, the scientific data that was matching up from every other illegal introduction to our situation. And then, you know, because we were, we were, everybody was fishing for those Pike, right? It was, that was a big deal. You can't eat them, by the way, either. Um, I think, you know, for myself, that was that was a hard sell for me. But then, being able to have some input into the community's health and keeping some of that bad stuff out of people and, and had them not eating that, because nobody knew that stuff until the tribe started doing the tissue samples. And we'll tell you, and that's was a lot of a lot of Pondre County. That's what it's about, right? We, I mean, my freezer's got some fish in it from the river we're eating fish all year round, right? That's, that's part of living out in the country, part of living on the reservation is the subsistence. Within the, the lower Pondere, there's two FERC licenses that have recently been issued, which both have um, prescriptions for pretty extensive habitat improvement and fish restoration work to help recover populations of cutthroat trout bull trout, not whitefish, and other native species. Pike pose what we believe is an unacceptable risk 
to those projects. Basically, there's, there's not a whole lot of opportunity to restore migratory salmonids if there's tens of thousands of northern pike in the reservoir waiting for them to exit tributary streams. Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons we're implementing the pike suppression project. Another is greater Columbia River Basin downstream movement into the anadromous zone of the Columbia could be disastrous to ESA recovery of salmon species, steelhead, um, as well as, you know, hugely important recreational and subsistence fisheries downstream. And then we knew that they would eventually get into Columbia. And there's no way that, uh, that uh, the states and the federal government were going to let a multi-billion dollar industry be decimated by pike, and what was the options? In 2012, they declassified northern pike as a game fish within the state of Washington and maintained its position on the prohibited species list. So it's now thought of in the state of Washington not as an opportunity, but as a threat. And, you know, on the same level as things like Asian carps and snakehead and piranhas, pikes on the same page with those uh, animal species. Now, the first two years, that was a lot of pike, boy. I mean, there, it was like, we tried to give them to the, that was before the tissue sampling, we tried giving them to the food bank. And the food bank loved us. They were like, that is the coolest thing ever. Um, and then it was like, well, and then they're like, hey, can we get some more of those pike? And we're like, well, we did some tissue sample work on that. And, you know, we, we can't really, we, we're not going to be the ones to give you that. You know, we can't tell you not to eat them, but we're not going to provide that anymore. Yeah, so today we were out, um, we we're in the third day of our annual spring pike index netting survey. Middle had three fish. Oh, yeah. They got a yellow tent. We got one Both fish, here, I think. Right is here. Of the three boats that have returned thus far, have set 33 nets, and the total pike capture was five fish. <laughs> so, in comparison, Three years ago, prior to our implementing the suppression project, we had an average um, catch per net of 13.2 fish. So we're in the neighborhood of a quarter fish per net um, today. So it looks like it may be feasible to mechanically suppress northern pike on a large scale in a large reservoir system. And so just being able to communicate that and just, you know, here, look at this, look at this paper that these guys put together, that there's these three or four lakes and these three or four rivers that pike were illegally introduced and the same thing happened in every one of them. The same thing that was happening here, that the, tr the tribe thankfully was well enough prepared and well staffed enough to be able to say, hey, we got to do something about this. We did it and I feel like it is a success because now we can go out and I don't have to have a steel leader anymore. I can just catch a fish. So I, they are, they're an apex predator, right? They're voracious. And that was why just seeing the numbers that we've seen and some of the other studies where pike were illegally introduced, you know, we have world-class biologists at the Natural Resource Department for Kalispell, uh, archaeologists, I mean, wildlife biologists. They're, they're on the varsity with us for a reason, right? And um, having them come in, do their jobs, and help the tribe and help tribal members like myself to be able to make these informed decisions and move forward in a good way you know 20 years down the line when some of these illegally introduced pike waters are nothing but eight six and eight and 12 inch pike then there's millions of them and then they'll come up here and they'll be catching big crappie and perch and you know hopefully some west slope cutthroat and some bull trout too right if we can get this get some of these temperature issues and the dissolved oxygen issues, get some fish passage at, at Albany Falls, and the, get this river back to where it was before and where it needs to be again. Woo!